welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another what the film video talking about movie news and there is a lot to talk about. So I don't want to waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and get right into it right now. First up, I'm not going to lie. This really surprised me when I saw it. Halloween Kills, an anticipated movie that I'm really looking forward to, but this was such an odd decision. I get why they did why they did it and I'll get into it in just one moment, but it's coming out October 15th in the theaters and also on Peacock. So I figured to myself, well, Shang-Chi just put up these huge numbers. Why would they put it on Peacock? And it's because they want to promote the service. Peacock, I'm signed up for a lot of services and streaming services that is, and Peacock is not one of them. Nothing about that intrigues me. The only thing that would is maybe The Office, but I own The Office, so there's no need for me to sign up for Peacock just to watch The Office. There's not really anything on there that grabs my attention that says to me I need to sign up. Like with HBO Max, I use that more than anything. That is, for me, my favorite service out there that of all that I have. But the thing about Peacock is compared to Paramount+, Plus, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, they just, I, they just don't seem to have enough content to kind of play ball with the other big guys and I think that their move to move Halloween Kills to this platform is them saying hey come over here and sign up and you can see Halloween Kills you don't want to go to the theater you want to watch it at home sign up they're going to lose a lot of money the studio that is with Halloween Kills but hey you know I don't make those big decisions I just think it's the wrong decision clearly keeping movies in theaters is what's making them the most money because even a movie like The Suicide Squad, which I absolutely loved, I saw it one time in the theater because then the other times I wanted to watch it, I sat on my ass at the on the couch at home. And for Shang-Chi, I've seen Shang-Chi twice. I'm going to go see it again this weekend. But because it's not on Disney+, Plus, I have to go out and see it again in the theater. So that's why it's getting those... That's why I had a $90 million opening weekend is because people like me that saw it twice... Anyway, they're gonna. It's a bad decision, I think. But I'm not in charge of the studio. I'm not in charge of Peacock. But yeah, that's the first thing up. Next up is Venom 2: Let There Be Carnage, directed by Andy Serkis, starring Woody Harrelson and the badass Tom Hardy. So this movie got moved up two weeks, which is awesome. But then a report came out that it was around like a 90-minute runtime, which is you know about an hour and a half. So. I think that kind of freaked a lot of people out because we're used to an age where superhero movies and stuff like that are more around two hours minimum to like 2.15 and then the epics being like in game close to three hours. So I think that when a lot of people saw the 90 minute runtime, they were kind of like, they had to like step back and be like, is that really the runtime? But the cool thing about this is there's not going to be like any filler. There's not going to be any extra unnecessary stuff that needs to be in this movie. If the movie's 90 minutes, and that means it's going to be nice and tight, we're going to get right into the action probably. And for a Venom film, that's what I want. I'm not watching Venom for any drama and scenes that don't need to be in there. I want to see Venom doing his thing, eating bad guys and fighting carnage. So with an hour and a half runtime, I'm cool with it. It sounds like they're just going to dive right into the scenes. So if you didn't know that there was a Disney live action Little Mermaid coming, well, there is, and it's already done filming. But even though it's done filming, it's not going to be out for like another two years. And the new release date is going to be for May 26, 2023. So we have a while until it comes out. And at first when I saw that date, I was like, that seems kind of far. One, I'm not really that interested in the Little Mermaid live action, but at the same time, curiosity got to me on why it would take so long but the article that i was reading about the little mermaid uh did a, it made a good point there's going to be a lot of underwater scenes and cgi going on so they're just giving themselves enough time to make it look right i suppose so yeah i mean it's not really one i'm looking forward to but with all the underwater stuff that's going to be going on it makes sense so a lot of people are probably going to be super hyped for this, but Christopher Nolan is ready to start his next film, and he's actually shopping around his new movie idea, which is about J. Robert Oppenheimer and the development of the atom bomb. As far as the subject of the movie, even though I didn't like Tenant, this sounds super interesting to me. Stuff that happens, movies that are about like real life events, 
or historical figures, I actually really like because then after the movie, I can delve deep into what I learned from the movie and learn more. So yeah, I'm actually a little bit excited for this. And yeah, so bring on the next Nolan film. So if you're like me, you probably really like Mad Max Fury Road. It came out a while ago, but better late than never because the breakout character from that movie, Furiosa, is getting a prequel also directed by George Miller. And before I get into the news, a lot of people were saying, well, I want him to do another Mad Max movie, blah, 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 blah. He's been doing Mad Max for like 30 plus years. He's done four films. He's in the same universe, but he just wants to tell a different story with someone else from that universe. So give the guy a break. He has an idea. He wouldn't be doing this if he didn't think it was a good idea. So anyway, back to the news. Anya Taylor-Joy, we've known, is going to be playing a young Furiosa in this movie. But what we didn't know is that the movie is now going to be delayed a whole nother year. So the movie doesn't come out until June 2023. But because of this news, it got delayed one year to May 2024. And I got to look up how old George Miller is. But I'm pretty sure this guy's in his 70s. And this is going to be like a big action movie. And... And Mad Max Fury Road, I'm pretty sure they did a lot of practical stunts, so I'm guessing they're going to keep that same momentum and do practical stuff in this. That just seems like a lot for someone that's in their 70s. But you know what? I trust them, and with all these movies being pushed back, we're going to see a lot of casualties being done. So unfortunately, this was just one of the casualties, so we're going to have to wait a whole nother year to see it. So that's going to conclude this episode of What the Film. I hope that I was able to teach you something about movie news this week that you didn't know even happened. So if you can, go ahead and throw your comments down in the comment section. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And until then, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Now we're getting the... That